Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, Morocco. You're on this little known show on Fox. Mm. I think it's called Empire yeah, or something. Barely known. It's kind of getting a name for itself <laughs> at this point, right? right? Why are you always trying to kill Lucius, I'm man? man. What's what's your problem with my with your half brother? You know, actually, you know, it's it's just trying to lock him up. <laughs> I don't want to necessarily kill him. I'm just trying to, you know, get him to the authorities, you know, and uh, uh, pay for his past. You know, that's all. <laughs> yeah, you start in theater. Yes. Then you have a bunch of roles on various TV shows, mm -hmm. and then I would call this the the breakout role because yeah. you land on arguably TV's biggest show. Yeah. And you get promoted to series regular. Yeah. Life's pretty good right now, isn't it? Life is lovely, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, because like prior to Empire, I was on Homeland and some other shows, you know. But Empire is just really, you go everywhere now. And you're just like, oh, you're the guy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I guess. What do you mean? You know, so it's just really weird. Like you just walk down the street and now people are just pointing you out or just coming at wanting to take pictures and stuff like that so it's, it gets really weird sometimes man. i'm always fascinated by instantaneous fame is yeah. it is it weird because you're used like i listen every actor and actress you talk to when you ask them hey what's it like being famous they'll give you the same answer i'm not used to it but the the really big stars they become used to it they live in their own bubble but yeah. when you start having that moment where people start recognizing you what's yeah. that like like is it yeah. freak you out yeah because you don't you don't wake up thinking oh i'm on empire oh i'm you know because i get reminded throughout the day so i wake up i go to the gym you know stuff happens i still ride the train you know people are looking at you, you know, and you forget and then you're like oh <laughs> you know or people are like i know you from somewhere and i'm like uh you know, because you don't want to do say. Do you do the play dumb mode? No, because you know, dumb. if you say Empire, they're like, no, 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 you used to go to so and so's church. I know your mother. <laughs> then you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, so it's like that. You know what I mean? You don't want to look stupid. You know what I mean? You know? See, I've thought about this. I would do the play dumb move. Like, they would be like, I know you're from somewhere. I'd be like, yeah. I have no idea. Meanwhile, I could be like the, the lead on the biggest right, show on TV. Right, like, right. Well, I say I get that all the time, you know, <laughs> and I, like until and I'll let them work, man. If they figure it out, they figure it out. But I don't I don't help them out at all. man. You know, when you get the ring and you're they say, all right, we're going to have you close out season two. Mm -hmm. You're probably like, this is really cool. I'm going to yeah. show my face on Empire. But yeah. then they make you an integral part of season three yeah. and upgrade you to series regular. What's right. that moment like for you as an artist? Well, see, the, the breakdown of the role, it said series regular possible no it said uh series uh possible no let me get this right it said recurring possible series regular right right so that means it's my job not to mess <laughs> up you know so i got to go in and do a good job to get that series reg role you know what i'm saying so i went to work when i got the call when i got the role i was just like let me work let me get to work let me work let me let me let me you know because you had to size up with terrence howard and he's a beast man he's he a is. beast people don't realize oh, he's that guy's a heck of an actor, isn't he's he? He's a silent assassin. You, and I watch him. I'm watch, Even when I'm not in the scene, sometimes I just sit and I just watch. I'm like, oh, you. And I'll go, I'm like, you. you, you. <laughs> and he'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know the thing with Terrence, and I mean this is an enormous compliment, he's pretty. Like, yeah. he's a very good look. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though? He's, yeah. a, he's a very good looking guy. Yeah. But he has the ability to portray the most sinister. Right. Like, it's not like you expect him. Like, he's not a hard-looking guy. But then, from Hustle and Flow to now, he's played some of the most sinister characters. How does he do that? I've always wondered. Uh, like, he's a very smart actor, man. You know, and uh, very intelligent. Um, we actually were born in the same hospital in Chicago, Cook County Hospital. And he was raised in Cleveland. So, if you, your family's born, he's from Chicago and raised in Cleveland, you're going to get some edge to you because Chicagoans and, you know, people from Cleveland, you're going to have some edge, man. You're not, you know, you're not raised in Bel Air. No disrespect <laughs> to Bel Air or, you know, Brentwood or anything like that. But, you know, you coming out of Chicago or Cleveland, you're going to get a little bit of edge in you. You know what I mean? And by you being so pretty, you better be nice with your hands or very intelligent where you don't have to, you know, mix and match with the environment sometimes. So, you know, um, me growing up on the west side of Chicago, had to had to be okay with the hands. <laughs> you, you were actually in the military, I yeah, was reading. Marine and, Corps, yeah. And I was reading that you actually took up acting to help you deal with PTSD. I sure did, you know. Um, um, acting, theater, um, acupuncture, and yoga, man, helped me a lot with PTSD. So, yeah, man, you know. Is that, you know, obviously we saw, we've seen with movies like American Sniper is the first mm -hmm. one that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. With PTSD, 
there's such an in, the, I think it's becoming more to the forefront because they are they're beginning to understand it more. Mm. But for people who don't under uh, understand what PTSD, how much does it actually affect your life? Well, you, you know, like you could be walking down the street and you hear backfire from a school bus and it'll put you on edge. Like I it, it, there are moments when I don't like for people to just walk up behind me and put their hands on me. You know, to like even tap. And me you're on the a shoulder. big guy. That's like a, <laughs> yeah. you'll end yeah. somebody. Well, no, I'm 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 candy now, man. <laughs> candy. I'm just an actor now. I, I play bad guys, but I mean, you know, just someone touching you unexpectedly kind of just puts you on edge. So, you know, if you you're coming from an environment where you were in this hot zone of fighting and and being able to react, hearing in your sleep, I was actually able to smell in my sleep if that makes sense, man. Unbelievable. Um, so when I first came home, I slept on my mom's couch. I had a bedroom upstairs, but I was like, the couch was the same size of a cot, and I was able to sleep on my back. And, you know, as Marines, we slept on a cot with our rifle like this, you know, so I was able to sleep like that. And it, it took a while to get out of that, man. Is it is it, when you return back from mm -hmm. action, is it difficult to reintegrate yourself from there? Yeah, and that's one of the, the things that we need to get better at. I mean, mine was like uh, 20 years ago. But, you know, when we came back, I came back to Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, and they were just, hey, all right, guys, go out to the mall. You're like, what? Okay. You're like, I'm going to use the bullets whizzing. Yeah, mine. I <laughs> guess I'll walk out to the mall, you know. So just trying to, you know, reacclimate yourself to the civilization kind of thing, you know. So it's how do you deprogram someone who's been on the, on the battlefield for, for months, years, or, you know, how do you do that? You know, so they're trying to figure that out, you know, because it's, it, it is, it's rough. But I'm, they have incorporated acupuncture in, in the VA, which is great. You know, it's, it's great. It's, I love acupuncture, man. How much of this background are you able to bring to a character like Tariq? Oh, a lot. Definitely. Definitely a lot. I mean, because when I did my backstory, I made him ex-military, you know, um, went on to become a, a New York uh, police officer and then FBI agent. So I used part of my backstory um, to to build this character, you know, so and the discipline and and what it takes to to um, to excel in, in a career like this. You know, we still use that today. But yeah, as far as Tariq, yeah, I use a, a lot of my backstory for the character. I'm always fascinated as an actor when you say backstory. How much, you know, we, my guest who was in here right before you knows your head writer, Danny Strong, mm -hmm. who's one of the best writers in this business, yeah. along yeah. with Lee Daniels, yeah. your EP. And I always wonder how much freedom is given, they obviously give you a script and they say, here's Tariq on paper. Yeah. How much freedom is given for you as an actor to then create Tariq, to create that backstory and make him or her, depending on what you're playing, what you want them to be? Well, you know, that's 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 a good question, um, because in the breakdown of the character, you have this breakdown, grew up in Philly with Cookie and Lucius, um, becomes a cop and goes and, and goes to be a, an FBI agent. So I was like, OK, that's what I have to work with. This is before he becomes a half brother. I, I learned that in the finale when yep. I get the script that yep. I, I'm his half brother now. And uh, so I was like, OK, so let me fill in. The, let me let me, you know, let me color it in. Let me color within the lines, you know, instead of making him this, let me smile, you know, and, you know, the eyes might be intense for the smiling. And it's just a whole thing of the silent assassin of how he moved, you know, of, of, of creating this character, you know. So anytime I approached him, I mean, the first time I approached him, I call him Dwight, his given name. So it's just like, let me let me see how much I can poke these guys or twist a knife, you know, and and. Thankfully, with Senna and, and Lee and, and Danny and uh, Eileen, they gave me a lot of room. And a lot of the directors who come on, they give you a lot of room to improvise a little bit. Because, I mean, yeah, the writers are based in L.A. We shoot in Chicago about a show that takes place in New York. So the, the conversation, our, the lingo in New York is different. So if you're living in L.A., you don't know what yep. the lingo in New York is. Because it, it, it changes every week, every every month. So I, I, I kept my my hand and pulse of the New York or what was going on in New York. So instead of saying brother, I'd throw in something like brethren, you know, throw in some Jamaican patois because, you know, it's a big melting pot. We have Dominicans, Jamaicans, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, you know, African-Americans, African, you know what I mean? It's a yep. big melting pot. So I'll take little things and I'll add little, little things, you know, in there. So, yeah. 
I'd mentioned Lucius, mm -hmm. but you have a little bit of a history with Cookie as well. So you get to work with Taraji, who, by the way, has be quickly become. She's always she's been around a long time, but yeah. I feel like she's finally gotten her due, yeah. and she's become just recognized for the incredible actress she is. What makes um, her so good? Cookie, I mean, she comes out of Howard University, which is a great theater program. You know, it's it's incredible, and I remember her. I mean, Hustle and Flow for me was one of her best roles because she was so subtle and so afraid to speak and just so so you know when she attacks a role with you know any great actor you watch how they build this character and attack the role man you know so if you look at her body of work Benjamin Button and and and, and uh, Hustle and Flow hidden like I figures. said Hidden Figures uh, Baby Boy um, this role here um, I mean she's solid man and you believe her in every role. Oh, she's like, amazing. You know what I mean? Cookie's amazing. <laughs> yeah, Cookie steals like, the show. You know, and then sometimes, you know, you she's so, so good that you're like, okay, where do you stop and the character begins? Or where do the, you know what I mean? So it's just like, okay, am I talking to Cookie or am I talking to Taraji today? So it's one of those things that she's so invested in the roles, man. And it's it's incredible. It's, you know, it's it's art. Do you ever have trouble disconnecting from Tariq? Because you had just talked about where the character stops and the actor begins. Is there ever that difficulty to disconnect from someone that you spend so much time, so many hours a day playing? Um, I would say, yeah, sometimes. You know, especially when you're doing theater, because you're so you know you're you're doing eight hours of rehearsal and you you know you you just you walk with that character. You know. Um, so yeah, there there's a lot of, you know, I have to, normally after I do a show, I go out of the country just to watch this, you know, character off me. Um, Tariq is a, close to me, except for me being an FBI and me sneaking out of, you know, back, back ways and alleyways and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, you, you have to learn how to turn it off. And hopefully you have someone in your family or your circle who can say, hey man, you, you, you're Tariq right now. I, I need you to turn it off right now. So, you know, so I, at least I have good people in my, my corner that's able to tell me to turn it off. Yeah. Before I finish up with you, when yeah. we were walking into the office here, you were telling me a great story about how you were just in Africa mm -hmm. and people knew about Empire in Africa. Oh, when you man. when you think about that, you're part of something yeah. that has global reach. Yeah. Is it mind blowing to you? It is. It is, and it and it was it was crazy because I was flying under the radar last year. I was there in April. You know, a few people saw me. They knew me from different movies, but then I like the last two weeks I was in South Africa. We had aired those uh, last two uh, episodes of of season two, and I'm same restaurant I'd eaten in like a week ago. I'm eating. I get up to leave, and the whole wait staff was like. Whew, and I was like, hey, whoa, wait, what's going on? <laughs> they were like, Empire, Empire. I was like, oh, okay, Sal Bona, let's take this, let's take this, let's take the picture, you know. So it's huge, man. And it's it's and they they love it. They're eating it up and it's great, man. I'm going to Kenya next uh next month. Uh Kenya, Kenya Uganda, Rwanda, and Tanzania. So uh we're gonna do some interviews and say hello over there, man, you know. You're yeah, awesome, fun. man. And you're great on the show. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, make sure to catch Morocco every week on Empire on yeah. Fox.